attack on free speech at the hands of U.S. big tech. The popular Daily Skeptic online newspaper, which has challenged some of the orthodoxy around COVID measures and climate change, has effectively been defunded by PayPal, who will not allow payments to be made through their platform anymore. And the Free Speech Nation, which provides the services of lawyers and other experts to protect just that, has met the same fate. The founder of both organisations, Toby Young, joins me now. Hi, Toby. Hi, Mark. Uh, great to have you on the show for what is a GB News exclusive. What has happened, Toby? Well, um, I assumed, Mark, that when I was cancelled in 2018 um, and lost five jobs in very quick succession, one of the silver linings was that I couldn't be cancelled again. You know, um, there was no more dirt left to dig up on me. The offence archaeologists had trawled through everything I'd said or written dating back to 1987. And, you know, they, the, the well was dry. I thought from now on, I'm bulletproof. But not so. That turned out to be naive. Um, uh, last week, um, I got a, an email from PayPal telling me that my personal PayPal account was being shut down because I had supposedly violated the company's acceptable use policy. And I thought, well, that's annoying because there's 600 pounds in my account. I now won't be able to get it out. Um, I won't be able to use it to make payments to my kids and so forth. But it's not the end of the world. And then a few minutes later, I got another email uh, also from PayPal saying that they had shut down the account attached to the Daily Skeptic. So any of the people making regular donations to the Daily Skeptic using PayPal as their processor would no longer be able to donate. That's about a quarter of our donors. And then I got another email a few minutes later saying that PayPal had shut down the Free Speech Unions account and about a third of our members. We have 9,500 members. About a third of our members are paying their recurring membership dues using PayPal to process those payments. Have been for two and a half years. You know, we've been paying PayPal a commission of 1.5% to do that, to perform that service for us. No warning, just out of the blue, the same message. You violated our acceptable use policy. I mean, OK, that's sort of credible in the case of one account, perhaps, but for three accounts to be found guilty of exactly the same crime within minutes of each other, it feels like something much more sinister is going on. And that uh, and PayPal have some form in this area, Mark. They have shut down other accounts. There's a, a gender critical evolutionary biologist called Colin Wright. He was uh, deplatformed by PayPal in June. He asked them why his account was being shut down. They said, you want to find out? Send us a subpoena. We're not going to tell you. And that was more or less their attitude to me when I called up and said, what's going on? What have I done? Tell me how I violated your acceptable news policy. Give me an opportunity to correct whatever I've done wrong. No, we don't know exactly what you've done wrong. We're just shutting down your account. No right of appeal, no right to parole. You're just dead to us as far as we're concerned. I mean, it's, 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 it's been absolutely devastating. I've spent the last few days sort of um, trying to do damage control. We've written to all our members now using PayPal at the Free Speech Union and explained to them they're going to have to switch to another provider. We've contacted the donors at the Daily Skeptic. But yet yeah, this isn't uncommon, Mark. This is the new battlefront in the ongoing war against free speech. Financial services being withdrawn from people, not because they've said or done anything unlawful, but because they've uh, said something a little bit unorthodox. They've criticised uh, the lockdown policy. They've raised questions about net zero. That's now verboten as far as these companies are concerned. And the way people are being cancelled now is that they're withdrawing financial services, making it difficult for these businesses like the Daily Skeptic and the Free Speech Union to operate. It's absolutely outrageous. I guess this has echoes of uh, GoFundMe, another US tech giant who suspended the campaign of an individual who was raising money for Canadian truckers who were protesting against COVID vaccine mandates. That's right. Um, and, uh, you know, um, Justin Trudeau, at his instigation, um, the bank accounts of people participating in the Freedom Convoy in Canada were frozen. That's how that protest was crushed by the Trudeau government. Um, it's the kind of behavior you'd expect in the communist run um, state of China, um, where people, because they, uh, pe people are constantly being demonetized, having their bank accounts frozen, financial services withdrawn, because they haven't towed the Communist Party line. We, we sort of expect that in communist China, but that is now spreading across the West. I never thought that I'd be the victim of it. Last week, I was. I read every newspaper every day because of my job and I read The Daily Skeptic online and it strikes me that you and your team are very thorough about accuracy. And if you quote 
statistics around COVID, for example, you normally cite official government data or peer-reviewed science. That's right. I mean, it's, it's not a conspiracy theory website. We bend over backwards not to publish any misinformation or disinformation. But as you know, Mark, if you say something that's slightly heretical, slightly seditious, if it challenges progressive orthodoxy, you know, it's often described as a conspiracy theory or misinformation or disinformation because that's just become, those have become euphemisms for an opinion I disagree with. But yeah, you're right. We always cite sources. We link to uh, all the papers we refer to. Whenever someone does fact check one of our pieces, we publish that fact check at the bottom of the piece and we replied to it. Um, uh, so, you know, it, 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 we're being treated as though we were Alex Jones. I mean, uh, PayPal have, have just, I think, redrawn the Overton window. And you know, there are there's certain issues now you're not allowed to express skeptical opinions about. And if what they've done to the free speech union is anything to go by, you're not allowed to defend people expressing those uh, unorthodox opinions either. Well, it's worth remembering that you are an experienced, uh, long established and respected journalist, associate editor of The Spectator magazine, which I think is one of the oldest historical period, uh, political periodicals in the world. Uh, let me read a quick uh, response from PayPal. Due to our legal and data protection obligations, we cannot comment on an individual PayPal customer's account. PayPal regularly assesses activity against our longstanding acceptable use policy and will discontinue our relationship with account holders who are found to violate our policies. 